Hi. Today I'll read from End Time, January, February 2013. And 666, Mark of the Beast. Six six six, the mark of the beast. It's the most famous prophecy in the Bible. Its message is crystal clear. A time is coming very soon when every person on earth will require to have a mark or a number without, without which he or she will not be permitted to buy or sell. In practical application, a national ID card or number will be required to hold a job. Of course. With no job, a person will have no money with which to buy and sell. One more condition of the prophecy is what makes it so ominous. Each person will have to worship the Antichrist and his world government in order to have his national ID card or number validated. Worshiping the Antichrist probably refers to some form of pledging allegiance. Without pledging allegiance to the Antichrist, and his one world government, the individual will be frozen out of the global economy. However, if any person does pledge allegiance to the Antichrist, the prophecy states the punishment will be eternal damnation. Oh, wow. Revelation 14, 9 through 11 says it this way, and the third angel followed them saying with a loud voice, if any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever, and they have no rest day or night who worship the beast and his image and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. The alarming thing is that almost every nation on earth either already has the national ID system up, set up or is in the process of setting one up right now. Many nations took significant steps toward establishing or enhancing their national ID system during 2012. India. In 2010, India ordered 1.2 billion ID cards, one for each of its 1.2 billion citizens. The goal was to implement a nationwide program to register and assign one-of-a-kind ID number to every Indian resident, some 1.2 billion people. By 2020, and to meet an interim goal of issuing 600 million IDs by 2014. By April 2012, India had enrolled 200 million people in its unique ID program. Once the system is in place, people in India will be able to provide their 12 digit number show fingerprints and iris scans, and immediately a central database will be able to authenticate that they are who they say they are. It is also projected that the, nation, the national ID system will be used for opening bank accounts and then eventually for purchasing things electronically. Sweden. In March of 2012, it was reported that more and more businesses in Sweden were moving away from accepting cash. There are towns where even banks no longer accept or dispense cash. Everything is being done electronically. Bills and coins now represent only 3% of Sweden's economy. Sweden is almost cashless society already. Russia. Russia's President Dmitry Medvedev announced in the spring of 2011 that Russia would launch a universal electronic card. 
UEC in 2012. This card is intended to eventually replace all local, regional, and national forms of ID providing a central database through which Russians can access everything from medical insurance to ATMs. According to the official website, the UEC will be adopted by around 1,000 national and regional services along with about 10,000 commercial enterprises. The mayor of Moscow has already declared it will be able to handle public transportation there and we can expect similar adoptions throughout the nation. The cards were scheduled for rollout beginning in January of 2012. However, this has been delayed because the cards are not yet available and the system is not working properly. The revised distribution plan is to give cards to all who apply for them in 2013. The following year, cards will be issued to all citizens unless a person makes a written a written statement of refusal. Excuse me. Pakistan. Pakistan's National Database Regulatory Authority launched the country's new Smart National Identity Card in October of 2012. It held the launch at the 8th Symposium of Inter International Civil Aviation Organization on Identity Documents, Biometrics, and Security Standards. The Smart National Identity Card contains 36 security features. The Pakistani government has invested RS200 billion in developing smart card IDs with biometric verification for use in humanitarian assistance and financial inclusion programs. It also plans to roll out e-government services such as insurance, pension disbursements, and e-voting with the cards. United States. In the US, the battle against a national ID card, deceptively called Real ID, has been fierce. The deadline for implementation has been changed from May 11, 2008 to December 31, 2009, to May 11, 2011, to January 15, 2013. With the January 15, 2013 deadline fast approaching, Homeland Security has been ominously quiet on the issue. With many states still in non-compliance, it appears this deadline won't be met either. However, after seven years of continual pressure, some of the states seem to be coming around. Even those states that have laws on their books forbidding compliance with the Real ID are in fact moving to comply. The National Conference of State Legislatures says it's not trying to get repeal legislation reintroduced into the U.S. Congress and instead is focusing its efforts on changing the Homeland Security departments implementing regulations in order to allow states to save face by complying with the law without admitting they're doing so. Technology prepares for the mark of the beast. Hitachi Electric announced a new camera technology that can scan days of camera footage instantly, finding any face that had ever passed the camera's lens. Hitachi claims the new technology can scan 36 million faces per second. FBI launches new generation identification program. In 2012, the FBI officially started rolling out a state-of-the-art face recognition project that will attempt to accumulate and archive information about each and every American. The cost, one billion. As of July 18, 2012, the FBI reports the NGI program is on scope, on schedule, on cost, and 60% deployed. All students must wear RFID badges. In the beginning of its 2012 fall semester, John Jay High School in San Antonio, Texas launched the Smart ID program for all its students. Each student was given an ID badge containing 
a radio frequency identification, RFID, chip enabling the school to track students from the time they board the school bus in the morning till they exit the school bus in the evening. Andrea Hernandez refused to wear the tracking technology on religious grounds. She said it was getting too close to the prophesied mark of the beast in the Bible. After meeting with the school officials repeatedly, Andrea received a letter suspending her from school as of November 26 if she did not agree to wear the badge by that date. On November, on November 21, it was announced that a district court judge of Bihar County, Texas, had granted a temporary restraining order to prevent the Northside Independent School District from expelling Andrea from school. The fight to force compliance is continuing. Just barcode everyone at birth. In May of 2012, science fiction writer Elizabeth Moon argued that everyone should be given a barcode or an implanted chip at birth. She asserted that this would solve mistaken or stolen identity problems for life. Moon's proposal brought a quick response from Jay Stanley Sr., policy analyst at the ACLU, to have a record of everywhere you go and everything you do would be a frightening thing. He warned of a checkpoint society where everyone carries an internal passport and has to show their papers at every turn. Once we let the government and businesses go down the road of nosing around in our lives, we're going to quickly lose all our privacy, Stanley said. When barcoding or, or chipping every person at birth is being openly and seriously discussed, can the mark of the beast be far behind? Questions on everyone's mind. Question. When will the national ID card become the mark of the beast? Answer. When a pledge of allegiance to the Antichrist or his one world government is required in order to validate your national ID or your ID number. Question. Why fight against the national ID if it's not the mark of the beast? Answer. If we can stop the national ID, the mechanism for the mark of the beast will not be in place when the Antichrist wants it to implement it. That's it. Thanks for watching.